So this video serves as a complimentary guide to the simple Azure containers video. In that uh, video, what we did is we deployed this, these Flask microservices as containers. And so that involved three distinct steps. First, we had to deploy a Azure container registry. Second step is we ran a Docker build and built these, these services based on an Ubuntu image. Then we pushed that uh, Docker image into the ACR repository. And then the last uh, step, the third step, is to use the simplest uh, Azure runtime, container runtime, which is container apps, to instantiate an instance of that container that we built. So what we're going to do is take that build methodology, that three-step build methodology, and use GitHub Actions. So you're no longer building in your your uh, on your private box. You're, you're building up in the GitHub environment. And so to do that, you have to do several things to set that up. So we're going to walk through that, what the things you need to do to set up. Now, uh, you've probably heard about continuous integration and continuous deployment, CICD. That is a set of best practices that sort of allows us to build, uh, build and deploy software in a more modern way. Uh, and all this is, is GitHub Actions is, is just one tool of many that allows you to implement that, uh, those modern practices. So we're just doing sort of a, a basic scratch the surface of how you do GitHub Actions to build stuff for Azure. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a GitHub repository from a the template. All the, all these projects that I do on this channel are template repositories, so you can clone them very easily. So we're going to walk through creating a clone uh, of this uh, this Azure project. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to open a new tab. And you will notice that it's a public template. And we're going to use this uh, green button right here and say use this template, create a new repository. So I'm going to create a new repository and I'm going to call it uh, Azure uh, Demo. And I'm going to say demo repository. Now, ultimately, we're going to put some secrets in here. Uh, and I tend, if I'm going to put any secrets into the settings, even though they're supposed to be uh, secure, I always just make this a private repository. So I'm going to make that private. So I'm going to hit create repository. Okay, now what we need to do is, this is my clone of the repository. So I'm going to go and I'm going to push pull this code into my environment. So you're going to go into uh, here, and I'm going to choose SSH. So I'm going to end up pushing stuff uh, back into the repository. It's just easier to do with SSH. So I'm going to uh, copy this URL, and then I'm going to go to my development environment, and I'm going to do git clone paste. And that clones it, and then I'm going to go to the directory, and here's our project. Now, what we need to do is we need to build the backend. And so I'm just going to walk through doing that, and then we'll look at the artifacts that it produces. All right, so I'm going to go to the backend, 00, zero backend directory. This is sort of the bootstrap part where you have to do the remote backend. So I'm going to do terraform init. And then I'm going to do terraform apply. I'm going to hit yes. And then I'm going to let it build. Okay, that completed. And you'll see that uh, there's three things that get generated by this build. First, we create a storage account. And then we create two backend files. So let's talk about wh what is a backend. Well, essentially, when you do a, a, a Terraform build, if you look at this Terraform state file, it's this giant... Um, JSON file that keeps track of the current state and compares it to what the, what's actually deployed. And this is when you do a plan or apply where you get this message that says it's going to add so many things, modify, destroy. This is what it's comparing. It's, it's state file and whatever. This state file is in my, 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 my personal development environment. So what happens when you have a bunch of people who want to work on the same general project and deployment? you need a way of having a common location to store all the state information. And so uh, it's essentially a, a JSON file just like this. And what we're going to do is we we say, OK, go put this in a storage account. Instead of doing this local file as a storage account, and then multiple people can have access to it as long as they have permissions. And this allows you to build stuff in GitHub or, or locally 
and to all be building on the same state. So there, that's the, that's what the storage account is for, is to storing these TF state files. And so what I'm going to do is the other thing this thing builds is it builds um, in the appropriate directory, like the ACR directory, if you get it right. It creates this backend file. So that build actually created this backend file. And the backend file has got, okay, Terraform, we're going to use Azure as a backend. Here's our storage account name. Um, here's a container name. And the key is here. It's just basically a directory. So that this file, Terraform, that state we were just looking at, that would exist, a file like that would exist in, in this directory within the storage account. And that's the same with um, the container app. So if I go to uh, 03 container app, actually it's more in it. Same deal. It, it puts it in a slightly different directory so we can keep track of two different state files. And now when we do a build, all this is going to be put into the storage account and can be shared uh, across projects and, and team members. And I'm going to do git add, git commit, backend. Okay, so now we've pushed that remote state configuration. Now we need to figure out how to use it. So let's go back to the project within GitHub. And you'll notice at the top, there's this thing called actions. And actions is all the, the pipelines. And so if you look at the original project, there was an uh, apply.sh, that's generally about the build solution. There's a check ENV, that's going to be the check build environment. There's a destroy SH, and then there's a validate SH. So this roughly follows those, those shell scripts that we created in the original project. And you click on settings. And then you go to um, secrets, variables, and actions. And I'm going to do new repository secret. And I need to go in and put in all my values. Okay, I have set the four secrets. So now what I want to do is, let's set them, let's go back to actions. And let's run that uh, check environment build. Let me hit run. And let it run. Click on that. Okay, so it finished running, and this should look very similar. This is the same output that is in the check env sh script and in essence i've taken that script and embedded it into this github action so now we're ready to do the main event so the main event is the build all so i'm going to go back to actions click on build solution and i'm going to say uh, run workflow so let's go to where these pipelines are actually stored so if you go on your project the way it figures out what to show in that actions thing is it looks in this directory that, that, that github workflows. And this is where we have the YAML files that define what exactly um, the builds are doing. And really, it's, it's a lot of YAML. Uh, we set up the environment variables in each one. And when you get down to it, there's essentially a section in the YAML file where it's the shell script. And so what I do is I take the shell, I already developed these shell scripts within the project. And often that's what I do is I start off with these shell scripts that do the builds. And then when I move to an action, I'm really just grabbing those shell scripts and putting them in this run section where it's actually gonna run the um, shell commands to do the builds. So there's a lot of similarity between the apply.sh and this build YAML as far as what code is used to build the uh, the actual um, solution. And so I've got one for apply.sh, that's for check ENV, and destroy and validate. Okay, it took about seven minutes and here is the, the build state. We're all green. So let's sort of walk through the build phases. And so the first phase is, of course, to build the container registry. So if you look at that, there's several stages. A lot of it is set up and checking out the code. So the one where we're essentially taking that shell script that we, we did from the applied SH and putting it in the uh, pipeline or the GitHub action, as you can see, it's doing the CD and you'll see Terraform init. And then um, 
your turf won't apply. So it's just like you would see in your own shell, but it's a, the VM is all up in the GitHub ecosystem. Then the next thing is the build the container. And here we have to install uh, Docker and uh, a couple other tools. And so we are going to look at this build. And this also looks just like the, uh, the shell script where it goes through and runs a Docker on the uh, Docker image of the Docker file. And it, you get a lot of output that it ends up pushing into the uh, repository that were created, the ACR repository. So the second phase is complete. Now the third phase is we're going to build the container app. So again, uh, some setup stage stuff that is common to most of the uh, GitHub actions uh, in this project. Then we do a, a fly terraform. And this is again, cooking back at build SH in the, or applied at SH in a main project. You will see um, it's the shell script, the same shell script. Uh, the final phase, which is not really the build, it's just a validation, is we run the validate sh script. And you can see it's it's got this value in here. So I can um, click on this. And that that's sort of the smoke test. It shows you, in fact, that the, you know, the good to go endpoint at least is running. At this point, you could spin up Postman and test the four endpoints like I've done in the, the prior videos. I'm not going to do that here since that's not the focus of this video. We're going to be a good stewards of our cloud accounts. So I'm going to go to actions and I'm going to say destroy. And 